Good evening, everybody. How is everybody doing this wonderful hump day evening? Um, I hope everybody is having a wonderful evening and had a wonderful day and a wonderful week thus far. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to, what I really wanted to discuss today because after hearing some uh, breaking news just a moment ago, uh, I don't know if y'all was watching the news or not, but charges has been filed. Charges has been officially filed against Jesse Smollett. And from what I saw, um, let me pull back up my little news right here. But what I just saw was basically he's been charged with, um, hold on. Let me make sure I get it right. Because I didn't prepare to talk about this. I came to you guys tonight to discuss <laughs> Black in Chicago. And then right when I was about to go live, I'm like, oh my God. Um, Jesse Smollett has officially been charged. Um, first of all, of course, you know, we all kind of knew or thought, assumed, whatever. Um, that he was lying about the whole situation. About, uh being attacked, you know, by some white supremacists, racists, you know, homophobic, homophobic, uh, you know, attackers or whatever. So he's been charged with, um, disorderly conduct for filing a false police report in an attack. And let's see if they say anything else here. Yeah, basically he's been charged with, and it's a felony, you know, because he, you know, allegedly reported, you know, a false, uh, crime, a false attack. And so they're charging him with a felony. So I don't know, maybe after I finish this live review, I might come back later, you know, right after we end this and discuss it, or I might just wait till tomorrow to see if there's going to be any other charges. Um, you know, but as of right now, it says he has officially been charged with a felony for allegedly filing a false police report claiming he was the victim of a hate crime attack in Chicago, according to Cook County. I don't know if it's time or if it might be too soon, but we, Jesse might be saying rest in peace to his career. I mean... Still, we don't know who's in that casket on Empire, right? A lot of people thinking, well, maybe, you know, Jesse, you know, knew he was going to be cut out. He was going to be killed off or something like that. And that's why he created this whole hoax, you know, to try to keep him, you know, on the show. But I don't know. Still don't know who's in that uh, coffin. <laughs> Still don't know who's in that coffin on the Empire show, but anyway, anyway, um, I, I just don't know what to say about Jesse besides, I don't know, good luck, because, I mean, again, I, I, I'll get on this, <laughs> I've been used up my whole time this evening talking about uh, him instead of doing my little live review on uh, Black Ink, but anyway, again, I might come back later with that uh, tonight or tomorrow. But as far as Black Ink, are you guys caught up? Because I wasn't, and I actually had to watch the last episode, and then I had to watch this week's episode in order to get caught up because it was just so much other stuff going on in the news, and, you know, I was doing more reviews on trending news and, you know, trending crimes and things like that um, that I got a little behind on my Black Ink, which is one of my favorite shows. But, but... Um, you remember they was all in Vegas and they had got down to Vegas and, um, uh, went to a tattoo, uh, conference, one of the biggest ones, actually, tattoo conventions. So now they're back from Vegas, they're back in the shy, and Don and Charmaine and Ryan, you know, they were all sitting around, you know, discussing, you know, how Four is doing, because remember Four 
he, um, in the past, which I didn't know, in the past he had had issues where he was dealing with, you know, depression and threatening to kill himself. I don't know if he's ever tried, but he has threatened it before, and I guess this, you know, came back up recently, him being, you know, depressed and everything. So, anywho, um, the last episode I saw, which was a few weeks ago, he had decided, you know, he would go get help, he would seek counseling, you know, go to therapy, and he's also been in Atlanta, you know, with Don's family, you know, spending time with family, you know, getting some quality time with family, and I think that's really a good thing because, as far as definitely getting away from Black Ink, because for probably right now, the biggest thing he needs is his life is some peace and stability. Um, you know, he had broke up with his girlfriend, and, you know, then with Black Ink, you know, they had, uh, Black Ink had separated from each other, then they had created Loyal Ink, then Loyal Ink dispersed, and now everybody's black at Black Ink. <laughs> so, you know, it's a lot going on right now, so I think it was best for Ford, you know, to lead the shop, to, you know, go get his head together, and hopefully he'll be able to do that in Atlanta with Don's family. But, um, as far as Adriana and Lily and Junior... Um, regardless of what went down in Vegas, <laughs> you know, with Junior and his girl and Lily, um, Junior's back in the shop, you know, Ryan, you know, requested him, offered him his position back because, you know, Junior's a really, really good tattoo artist and, you know, Ryan felt the need to offer him back his position. Lily, although she tried to, um hash things out with him, you know, apologize and, you know, try to get past, you know, their relationship, their breakup, you know, all the hurt and pain that they didn't cause each other. She wasn't too happy about him coming back to the shop, but, you know, what can she do about it? <laughs> what can she do about it? So, anyway, Lily's back, um, uh, Junior's back at the shop, Lily, Four, Charmaine, uh, Van, Don basically everybody's back at the shop, which, I swear I said this was going to happen. I don't know if this was whole, all the whole setup, you know, in the beginning. But it's just crazy how every single person is back at the shop. But anywho, anywho. Um, Charmaine, you know, she's still working at WGCI, you know, 107.5. It's a hip-hop and R&B station. And I was kind of surprised to see Erica Mena, you know, show up and stop through for an interview with Charmaine. Um, I haven't seen Erica Mena in a while. I mean, remember she used to be on the reality show, uh, Love and Hip Hop. And besides that, you know, I ain't really seen her anywhere. But then come to find out that she and Ryan, you know, are pretty familiar with each other. So, you know, they got some history. I'm not saying that type of history, but, you know, I I'll give it, I'll give back to that later. But anyway, um... She is engaged to Safari, and I didn't know that. I mean, d did y'all? I, I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea that she was engaged to Safari. Um, Erica Mena, uh, she's dated, you know, quite a few people, you know, since I first uh, realized who she was, you know, from, you know, seeing her on a reality show. But Safari... I don't know. What y'all think about that? Mm -hmm. All I have to say is good luck to Erica. Not because of their relationship. Not because of their engagement. Not because of their upcoming wedding. Whenever that is. <laughs> but if y'all remember that video that was going around the world and I, 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 I of uh, Safari. <laughs> that, oh Lord Jesus, that anaconda scene. Good luck, Erica. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it, but God bless you and your ovaries. <laughs> because, boy. Anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on. But um, I also didn't know that she used to work for uh, one of the Kardashians, you know, in one of their boutiques before she, you know, started in Love and Hip Hop, the reality show. But, you know, learned a few things about her this episode. Um, As far, though, as Adriana and Junior... Um, in that Lily issue that I kind of hit on a little while ago. Um, Junior, you know, he was sitting around and explaining to Ryan, you know, basically, 
uh, they got into it. We saw how they got into it back in Vegas, and it had blew up and everything. And I had um, said on my review, my last review on this show, that I don't know for sure, you know, if Junior really, really confessed his love to Lily, you know, after him and Adriana started dating. But for Adriana to just roll with it, like, okay, some female tells you your man did this, and you just automatically roll with it, like, okay, you know, get so angry that you break up, break up with him. I'm like, dang, she didn't even give him a chance to explain himself or anything. So I guess he's been sleeping on the couch, and they still arguing and fighting and everything, and things are not cool in the household. Um, He's, of course, still denying it that he uh, has stated to Lily that he was still in love with her. And he actually, when they were, um, when they got back to the States, I mean, not back to the States, but I'm um, thinking of their Jamaica trip. But when they had got back to Chicago, uh, he had mentioned to Lily, you can't prove that to my girl, so why are you bringing that up? Why, you know, just, just stop saying it. it. It didn't happen. I didn't say it. I never told you I was in love with you. And he's telling Ryan, you know, how can I be in love with somebody who so, you know, hateful, who so, you know, hurt me and all this kind of stuff. But, but, would it be so far-fetched to believe that that really happened? Because a lot of people break up, they be in love with each other, still have strong feelings for each other, regardless of what happened in a relationship. Somebody could have cheated, somebody could have hit each other, um... And they can still be in love with that person. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. So that's why I said I don't know if Lily is lying or not, but it, it's, it's reasonable to believe that that could have possibly happened. But what's so wrong with that? When you meet somebody, you you usually still, especially if you if it's shortly after a breakup, you still have some kind of feelings for that person. But I think he's just in denial because he don't want to hurt his new uh, girlfriend's, you know, feelings. I think that's what it's all about. But, you know, again, um, they're still on the rocks and everything. And he's sleeping on the couch. But uh, the one thing about it is Adriana. She seems like a really, really, really sweet lady. A really sweet lady. And she's willing to give him another chance. She met him at the pool hall slash bar, whatever that was, pool hall, bar. Because um, she wanted to get some things off of her chest. But Junior, Junior was lit. Junior was so lit. I don't know what was going on with Junior. I don't know if it was just alcohol, if it was something else, you know, mixed with alcohol or something he smoked. or I don't know. But Junior, his eyes, I mean... And then when he was talking to her, his neck, it was like his neck was just moving around all weird and stuff. Like, I'm like, is this fool about to fall over? <laughs> I'm like, is he about to fall over? I mean, did y'all see it? Did y'all watch the last show? I mean, his neck was just doing kind of like doing stuff by itself. Like he was trying to focus really hard to pay attention to his girlfriend. Um... I have stated before that Junior, I think, needs help with his alcohol, with his alcohol issues. That man, when he gets drunk, he gets white girl wasted, and he does things that he cannot remember, like fighting, cursing, calling people out, disrespecting people, um, all kind of mess, you know, that alcoholics do. Or, you know, drug addicts do when they under the influence and they go too far and wake up the next day. What happened? Where we at? I hear who? That, you know, Junior, I said before, I think he needs help. And I'm glad Adriana brought that to his attention. Like, what happened as far as, like, the fight? <laughs> Woo okay, like Bella. Okay, Bella, Bella, Bella. Even though I didn't agree with Ryan hiring her in the beginning because she herself actually came to her interview drunk. Like, I don't know if y'all remember that or not, 
But <laughs> I remember that. And it was like almost the first episode of last season where she came to her, her interview with Ryan and she was drunk, but he gave her another chance and had her come back, you know, when she had herself all together. But anyway, this dude that she um ran into again, she claims it was like her ex, you know, her first love, somebody that she's been hooking up with. Y'all know how it is, like... Off and on, every time you see each other, it's a, mwah, mwah, how you doing, how you been? Next thing you know, y'all in bed. <laughs> I don't know about this personally, but uh, <laughs> a lot of y'all do know <laughs> about that personally. But anyway, um, when she brings him to the shop, because I guess they want to have like, okay, when Charmaine, Bella had a good idea. It was a good idea. It was a good gesture. She told all of them she wanted them to meet her at the ice rink, you know, at the skating ice skating rink, so they could have some kind of bonding time because back in Vegas, all that drama, you know, they back in the shy. It's the holiday season, and she just thought they could use a little bit of fun. And they went out, you know, everybody besides Van seemed to have a good time because Van was on the ground, um, on the ice most of the time, you know, trying to get his self up from off the ice. But they all seemed to have a good time. And so Charmaine was like, you know what? And Ryan, you know, they were like, you know, the holidays is coming up. You know, how about we have a little get together, a little, you know, a party, a little, you know, like a Thanksgiving dinner. But they actually called it a Friendsgiving dinner. And that was a good idea as well. But... I don't know if Bella should have bought her man there because her man, um, it seems like he was ready, like from the jump. Like he just knew that they was going to try him. So he obviously been watching the show, paying attention to the show, or he didn't got some tips, <laughs> some advice from Bella before he came. So when he came to the uh, Friendsgiving dinner and right away, off the top, they was going in on him. His name is S. <laughs> SP and I still don't remember oh man I went back and I rewinded I'm like what does that stand for but anyway um they kept calling him side piece you know all kind of stuff like that and teasing him about his name and you know just give him a little shit you know you know how the fellas are at Black Ink but right away he tried to you know let them know hold up wait a minute I don't know who y'all used to I don't know who y'all used to but um, it ain't going down like that. Not with me. So he made it very clear, you know, when he first got there, like, y'all ain't gonna play me for no boo-boo the fool. Y'all ain't gonna sit here and tease me and joke and all this kind of stuff. And they were, you know, at times being a little disrespectful, especially when they call him side piece. Like, does SP stand for side piece? Again, I don't remember what it stands for. If y'all remember, put it down in the chat. Please put it down in the chat. But um, when Junior said, <laughs> okay, <laughs> remember when they were playing uh, Two Truths and One Lie? And it was Bella's turn. And one of her uh, answers was she had dated two people, two men. Well, actually, she didn't say men. Let me back up. She said two people because we already know that um, Lily and her, I believe, I believe has something going on with each other. But anywho, she said she had, you know, messed around with two people in the shop. And, like, right after that, Junior was like, uh, a side bitch. What do you say? Um, side bitch ain't your man for real? Uh... <laughs> SP, whatever that stood for, and when he heard that, that's when everything just escalated right there. I don't know why Junior said that. I was like, really, Junior? You just going to call this man a B like that? Y'all was already disrespecting him. Things had kind of calmed down. You know, after him and Ryan had words, Ryan was like, dude, we just playing. It's just jokes, you know, whatever, whatever. SP was basically, you know, letting it be known. I don't play like that. Y'all ain't going to disrespect me like that. And then for Junior to call him that, I, I don't know. Why did I get the feeling like Junior was acting kind of salty? Like, did y'all get that feeling? And then I was thinking, like, Junior, are you one of the two people? 
that Bella slept with in the shop? I mean, I don't know. He was acting kind of salty. And at first I was thinking, okay, that must be her lie. But then after Junior went off on SP, I don't know. Maybe that was the truth. I don't know if it was the truth. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> Lily was standing around and she was looking like, I ain't in this one. Thank God I'm not in this one. Uh, she's sitting there like, okay, it's about to go down, but it ain't got nothing to do with me. They cannot blame this fight on me. And I have to admit that ever since Lily, like the beginning of the season, Lily told us, she was like, I'm about to be 25. My birthday is coming up soon. And I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to start acting a little more grown, a little more mature. You know, just basically get on her grown shit game, you know? So, anyway, she's been doing that, if you ask me. But after he heard that, after he heard him call him a bitch, he jumped up. Of course, Junior jumped up, and it was on and popping. But please tell me why. Van, every single time, it seemed like Van be the first one to jump in. And it don't even have to be nothing to do with him, but he always have to jump in a fight. I don't know why, but he jumped in. And then next thing you know, Ryan had to get in. He done took his shirt off and he's running around shirtless, you know, trying to get through the crowd. And then Don, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I don't know what happened to that dude because it was so much stuff going on. And I, I don't know. I saw Junior swinging. I saw the dude swinging. I saw Van jump in. After that, it was just too much going on, so I couldn't tell what happened. But obviously, something happened because the man ended up in the hospital. He ended up in the hospital. So, Junior's girl, Adriana, I'm glad, getting back to that, I'm glad that she sat down with him, and she basically told him, you know, a lot of times you be going off and it's not necessary. You be putting your hands on, putting them paws on people and it's not necessary. Your alcohol, y you need to control yourself. You got to do something. You got to do something. Um, When she said that she was in therapy and that she was dealing with anger management, um... I, I can I can I can see that now. Like when she blew up, when Lily said what she said in Vegas, and she blew up, like blew up. She went from zero to ten real quick. So I can I can see you know I, I believe her that she's in therapy. But when she offered him to come with her, at first he was like, nah, you know he's basically in denial. I don't need no help. I'm good and everything. But you know with a little pressure. He ended up going anyway. So I'm glad he did go because he really needed the help. And then once he went and the therapist started trying to get through to him, it was like right after they got there, like right after he started talking, it, it was like something just happened. He started crying. Memories started coming back to him. And I'm like, oh, Lord, was this man abused? Or I'm like thinking like the worst, something that happened to him, you know, and he's about to break down and tell us something really, really deep. It wasn't nothing like that. His cousin actually was killed. Um, somebody he was really, really close to. And I guess from the anger and pain of losing his cousin, which from what he was saying, probably was more to him like a brother than a cousin. He was claiming, you know, they real close. They basically... They were thugs. <laughs> they were gangsters. They was out there in them streets. They was fighting all the time. Um, you know, taking stuff, taking what's theirs, what probably was not theirs, left and right. And, you know, running they they uh hood, they stomping grounds. And that's what he remembers before he had left that life. And so it seems like he's been carrying his guilt around because he's blaming himself for his cousin's death. Um, his cousin, who's, by the way, his name is Jesse. Um, but he was killed after he left that life. And he kind of feel guilty for not taking his cousin with him or being there, you know, to protect his cousin or whatnot. So it's a lot of built up anger and hurt and, you know, 
probably a little bit of depression in there too that he's been keeping, you know, deep down inside. And the therapist was, I guess, the only one who could bring that out of him. So I'm glad that he went to therapy and I hope that he continues to go to therapy. Um, you know, when you don't visit somebody's grave site, like purposely not visit somebody's grave site, that there are things that you have to face because there's not anybody in my life that I can think of that I wouldn't go to the gravesite purposely, like purposely avoiding the gravesite. So yeah, he's, he's been dealing with a lot of guilt, a lot of, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt. And thanks to his girlfriend, Adriana, you know, for getting him to that therapist, he was able to open up. And also the therapist told him, um, you need to take a stroll down memory lane. You need to go visit that grave site. And he did. And he did. And it was very hard for him. Uh, he broke down. It, it was really sad. It was really sad. Um, I just hope that he really continues to go to therapy because Junior really has some anger issues. Um, a lot of things, you know, deep down inside that he's been holding on to ever since, you know, he lost his cousin. So I really hope he does continue to go to therapy because he, he needs it. He needs it. And hopefully, hopefully they can work on that drinking issue too because I'm t that man be turned, turned all the way up. But um, as far as the fight goes, Lily, I guess she had put out some information on the fight because at first... Some information had got to social media. And it was like blow by blow by blow of what had happened at the shop. And Charmaine and I'm like, well, well who's, who said it? Who? I mean, they even knew that Junior called the dude a bitch. Like, they even knew that part. Oh, and this happened and Junior he slapped him or hit him and da-da-da-da. Then he went to the hospital, da-da-da-da. So I'm like, either it was Bella or it was Lily. It had to be one of the two. It had to be one of the two. But when Lily had approached them and told them, it's not funny. When they were joking around, like, when they had got back to the shop and people was like, where's Bella? You know, because when they had got into that fight, Bella got hit. And she was upset. She was upset because she got hit. She was upset because her ex, who she had brought as a guest to the Friendsgiving, you know, he had got basically jumped. He basically got jumped. And this isn't the first time. Like I said, I don't understand. I know they all cool. I know they go back. I know they like brothers, you know, like brothers, you know, from another mother and all that. But every time one of them get into it, they all don't have to jump people. That's that's just wrong. That's just wrong. But anyway, Lily, you know, basically she uh told them how she felt. It's not right. It's not funny. This dude is in the hospital. And they got mad at her because she was, I, I, I don't know if she was like sticking up for him or if she was just basically like, this is what it is. Y'all was wrong. And wrong is wrong and right is right. And there are not many times where I agree with Lily. Not at all. But at this time, I agree with Lily. They were wrong from the t from the gate. When SP came into the uh, shop, they was on him like white on rice. Teasing him, uh, provoking him, uh, baiting him. And I'm like, he was like, okay, okay, y'all calling me side piece. Y'all call me this, that, and the third. But then when you called me a B, that was a wrap. And what man ain't going to get mad if another man calls him a... <coughs> Okay, come on now. Come on now. But anyway, um, then to come to find out that Lily, okay, I guess a few months ago, um, Lily and Jen had got into it. And Lily had called her the N-word. And she was, it was, okay, they shot the video, but of course they bleeped out the words. But you can see Lily, she was upset, she was irate, she was on 10, just in this, in this, you you know, just going off. And so Charmaine caught wind of it. Um, it got back to some of the other people in the shop. And Charmaine wanted basically Lily to be gone because of what she said. And 
They claim that Lily only uses that word, the N-word, when she gets upset with a black person, when she gets into an argument with a black person. So Charmaine is like, she's racist. Now, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is my stance on the whole thing. It's not right for any of us to call each other the N-word. It's not right, but we black people do it all the time. We might not say the N-I-G-G-E-R, <laughs> but, you know, we, we say the short version all the time. And it's not right for somebody outside the race to do it. It's totally not right. Um, Lily is Spanish, Mexican, Latino, something like that. And I agree with Charmaine that she shouldn't be saying that. But in Lily's defense, in Lily's defense, she's like, I've been working with y'all three years. And now it's an issue? Now it's an issue? And that just leads me to know that they've been letting her slide, saying the N-word around them. And I do believe, I can recall a couple of times, maybe not the exact scene, but I can recall hearing her say that. But of course, they would like bleep it out. But you could, you know, when they like, N -n -n you, okay, you know, like they bleep it out, but you can still tell what the person was saying or what they did say by reading their lips. So if she's been doing this for three years and nobody's put a stop to it, why wait till it's on social media? Why wait till the video has gone around the world and I, 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 and now everybody is looking at y'all shop like, oh, y'all got somebody in there. She's racist. She's calling people the N-word. You know, it's, it's all over social media. I think that was wrong on Charmaine's part, maybe possibly on all of their parts, because they should have stopped. They should have nipped that in the bud. They sh whether they're white, Mexican, Puerto Rican, um, Asian, you should stop, you should nip that in the bud if you don't agree with it. But to wait three years down the line and now, oh, it's on social media, Lily's calling, you know, black people the N-word. Now she want to go hard and go in on Lily like, okay. I, it's wrong, but like I said, in Lily's defense, you should have nipped that, nipped that in the bud right away. But then, you know, also as far as her, uh, when they were saying, are you trying to stand up for SP? It wasn't that. It was just basically, I think, her and Bella are really cool and they really close. And that's Bella. that was Bella's guest, Bella's ex, somebody that she's obviously, obviously Bella's still in love with, still has a lot of feelings from. You can just tell the way she talks about him and how they act around each other. And for him to come to the shop for the first time and get jumped and end up in the hospital and... Now he wants to press, he's pressing charges. You know, he, he, he filed a police report and he's pressing charges on, I know for sure on Junior. I don't know if he's pressed charges on Ryan or uh, Van or, you know, the whole shop. I don't know, but he is pressing charges. So I think that's mainly what Lily was getting at was like, I don't, like she said, I don't have to know this dude. We don't have to be cool, but wrong is wrong and right is right. And I agree with Lily. I agree. So y'all let me know what y'all think. Do y'all agree with Lily? Do y'all think um they should put her out the shop or fire her because of the fact that she's been calling people the N word? Because now it's it's others know, we know, you know, it's it's on social media. Or do y'all think they should keep her? And I'm glad Ryan gave her the opportunity to at least say, you know, if she wants to go or if she wants to stay. But she was like, you know what, don't treat me like a kid and tell me go take a break, you know, take a few weeks off, go sat down somewhere, you know, and think about my actions. <laughs> y'all been letting her call y'all N-word and say N-word to other black people for three years. And now y'all want to tell her, uh, why don't you just take some time off? No. Y'all either going to let her go or y'all going to let her stay. But either way, again, I think they should have nipped that in the bud. <laughs> like, for real. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't imagine working anywhere, whether it's a, a tattoo shop or whether it's, you know, a law firm in corporate America. And I have somebody of the opposite race just slanging the N-word around, just throwing it around freely around the office, outside the office in meetings, you know, at holiday get-togethers or what not. I, no, from the jump, what did you say? What? what excuse me? But anyway, they let her do it. They let her slide for three years, so I don't know what's going to happen. We shall see. But um, as far as, uh, Don, no, not Don, Danielle. Danielle, I've been wondering where is Danielle. Like, what the hell? Where'd she go? Um, Danielle has been practically in every season of this show. And up until now, I... I almost, actually, I almost forgot about her. I ain't even gonna lie. I almost forgot about her because the last thing I remember about Danielle was when she was getting the mess whipped out of her. Remember on that sofa? Remember that sofa scene? <laughs> when Lily jumped on her? <laughs> she started molly whopping her butt on that sofa and it was a wrap. And I think, if I remember correctly, Danielle was there still for a few scenes after that. And then after that, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, she met up with Charmaine and Charmaine's um, boyfriend. And, you know, they're talking, discussing, you know, her upcoming wedding because Danielle is still with Terrence, which uh, that surprises me, really, because they had a very, very rocky relationship. He was cheating on her time and time again. So, you know... I'm kind of surprised that they still that they still are together, but um, Charmaine was giving her all the tea, you know, on what's going on as far as like with Lily and the shop and just everything that's going on. And as far as Danielle goes, when she was telling them about this was when Charmaine was telling Danielle about the uh, social media thing. Um, I don't know if Danielle's going to come back to the shop. What y'all think? Everybody else came back to the shop? Danielle took a break. She said she needed some time off. Her, get her relationship back together. Figure out what's going on with her life. I'm trying to figure out if she might return to the shop. And then again, what did she do at the shop? I can't even remember what she did at the shop. Like, I want to say she was a receptionist. <laughs> I want to say she was a receptionist, an assistant. I can't remember. Like, I think she did more than Charmaine, though, because Charmaine really didn't do a whole lot at the shop in the past. But um, now she's celebrity con concierge or something like that, and she still can't do that right. But anyway... Um, I think that she might end up returning to the shop just because everybody else has returned to the shop. But as far as um, when they had gave Lily the option, they was like, okay, you can leave if you're not happy. Ryan was like, do you want to stay? Do you want to leave? Next thing I know, her and Charmaine is into it. Like, Lily has been trying so hard to not get into it. I mean... Tonight, okay, I okay, I get it. That I'm sure there's a lot of us who know somebody who was raised in the hood around a whole bunch of black people, and because I didn't see it, I didn't see it. Mixed people, uh, white people, Asians, I didn't see it. You grow up in the hood with somebody of the opposite race, and they for some reason get a pass, and they. And the N word freely all around people in the hood. And for some reason, again, you just give them a pass because y'all grew up together in the hood. So I get where um, Charmaine was coming from and she made a valid point. Like, just because you grew up in the hood, Lily, your oppression is not my oppression. But again, Lily been, let, been able to say that word around her for three years. So, I don't know. But when they got into it, I mean, I think Charmaine must have had a flashback. Because not only, if y'all remember correctly, not only was Charmaine's cousin Danielle beat up by Lily, but also, whew, 
Lily, boy, <laughs> I can remember that fight as if I just seen it yesterday. She gave Charmaine the whooping of her life. Like, the whooping of her life. Um, and I think all that must have came back into her memory because when she jumped over that counter and dived at Lily, I was like, oh, my God. And Char Char Charmaine is, like, two times bigger than Lily. I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to kill her. She's going to kill her. But she, all that aggression was coming out. I'm like, where was that same energy when she beat you up? Where was that same energy when you watched her beat up your cousin? Where was that same energy? I don't I don't know. It's like, and then Lily has been trying and trying, you know, to uh, keep her anger, you know, locked up. Her anger issues locked up because most of them is from the hood. Most of them grew up fighting and in gangs and all that kind of stuff. So Lily's known for fighting. She's known for banging. She's known for running her mouth and popping off at people. And she has been doing really, really good. But I guess this... As far as Charmaine calling her a racist and her, you know, defending herself, I don't know. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? I'm sure, again, I'm sure y'all know somebody that y'all probably grew up with or knew through somebody who said the N-word and they were not black. And they got passes. Maybe not by you, but they got a pass from somebody. So, does that qualify them as a racist? Just because they call people the N-word? Or is that just something they were allowed to do and they got away with it and as they got older and became adults, they still think it's okay. They still think it's okay. Or they think it's okay if they hang around a certain group of people. So I personally, I don't know Lily personally, but right now I'm going to give her a pass and say that she is not racist. Now, if they bring me some more tea, <laughs> bring me some receipts of her really being racist then okay I won't be able to rock with you Lily but right now I'm going to give you a pass only because they let you do that for three years again it's not right but they let you do that for three years and I don't think they should kick you out the shop and call you a racist because it was caught on social media you using the n-word so anyway y'all let me know what y'all think though about that because I don't know I I don't know. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. I actually think they should probably give her another chance to redeem herself. That is that is what I think. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Should they give Lily another chance? Should they let her go because it was on social media? Um, and maybe they're thinking, you know, since other people, you know, out of the world knows about it now, they might think that we're allowing races. I mean, you know. <sighs> To work at our shop. So y'all let me know what y'all feel about that. And let me know what y'all think about that uh, SP guy. Um, how do y'all feel about the situation where they always jumping people? Um, do y'all feel like he should have pressed charges? Or do y'all think he should have just charged it to the game? Like, okay, you got whooped. <laughs> you know, carry on. You lit a fight another day. <laughs> But let me know what y'all think about that. And also let me know what y'all think about Junior um, as far as how he's been dealing with um, dealing with the pain and the loss of his cousin. Um, as far as basically, you know, he, he said straight up, I, I try to forget it. I try to not remember it. I don't want to remember it. And that's the whole reason why he's never visited the grave site. So let me know how y'all feel about that situation as well. And um, put it all in the comment section in the chat, which will be open for a few more minutes. And then after that, the comment section will be open and y'all can put your comments in there. And I'll get the notifications, of course, and I can chop it up with you in the comment section after this. But anyway, y'all, um, again, as far as the Jesse Smollett situation... I don't know. I, I might come back later tonight. I don't know. It'll probably be tomorrow, though, when I deal with that situation because that's a lot right there. Um, him being charged with a felony for lying and, you know, falsifying information and police reports. And, oh, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. 
So I think I might come back and speak on that tomorrow night because maybe by then we'll have a little bit more information when I wake up in the morning and watch my news shows, my GMA and The View and all that because I know they gonna be everybody is going to be talking about that tomorrow morning. But anyway, y'all, in the meantime and in between time, Primetime Squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces. Good night.